Hey, I'm so glad that you decided to join me today for the Content Creation Made Easy podcast. This episode is diving into one of those things that I think is so important, which is knowing yourself more so that you can show up in your content more authentically, uh, more like you, more comfortably. I'm Jen Liddy. I am a copy and content strategist. And today I'm introducing you to a friend of mine, Carrie Hanna. And Carrie is... Oh, she does a lot of things, but I have her on today because she's an expert in the Myers-Briggs inventory. And if you've ever heard of the Myers-Briggs, it's a personality tr type inventory, or um, I would say like it's kind of, inventory is the formal word. Carrie, is there a better word for inventory? Like it's kind of a questionnaire or a Assessment. Or, yes. Assessment. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> And but Carrie is an empowerment coach and a sacred gifts guide. And so she's a life coach, but she's also got this really specific expertise that I wanted to bring her on for, which is that she knows she's trained in the Myers-Briggs and we'll talk about what Myers-Briggs is, but today's episode is all about figuring out a little bit more about your special personality and how that can come through more comfortably in your content. Carrie, do you think I nailed it on that? You Did I get it nailed right? it. All Way right. to go, Jen. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> um, the extrovert in me needs to be, you know, like, tell me I did a good job. Um, so anyway, Carrie, thank you for coming on today. Can you tell us just a little bit about, you know, what you do and who you help and then how you got there? Oh, wow. Um, well, thanks for having me, Jen. I'm super excited to be here. And um, I am a women's empowerment coach. I help women over 50 who feel stuck and don't know what to do next, um, rediscover themselves and their purpose and unique and special mm -hmm. gifts so that they can move into the next chapter of their life with confidence and joy. And So could this yeah. be like family, business, career, yeah. anything? Absolutely anything. Just women mm -hmm. that are feeling like they're ready for something potentially different. They're at a shift. Mm -hmm. Like I'm in my fifties, late fifties mm -hmm. now, and I'm starting a whole new career. I mean, you know, in the last mm -hmm. couple of years, I've started a couple different businesses. So it mm -hmm. doesn't matter whether you're an empty nester, whether you're winding down one career, starting another, or whether maybe you just want to go off and travel with your hubby or something, or, mm -hmm. you know, on, a, on your own. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Just at a crossroads and you're ready for something different. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I think um, I think that you're giving people permission to say like, okay, that was then, this is now, what am I going to do next? So Absolutely. Absolutely. Love it. So what did you do before you became an empowerment coach? Wow. What a journey. Um, I am <laughs> in your 50s, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I did a lot. Of things, I, did a I lot did of things. a lot of things. Um, I am not that person like my brother, who's a biologist and probably knew from birth that he was going to be a biologist. Mm -hmm. I am, I'm the baby of the family. I was the people pleaser, the, the, you know, the person that just wanted to make everyone happy. I wanted to be an actress. I wanted to, I modeled, I was in administration. I mean, I did, I worked in travel and tourism. I was always on that search for mm. my greater purpose. That is what I will tell you. There was always the thread of helping people, servicing people in some sort of way, in some sort of industry, in the service industry. Mm -hmm. But I never really had found my true calling until I stumbled upon the coaching industry in the year 2000, way back when. 23 years ago. Wow. Yes, 23 years ago. And, um, but yet, and I had actually stumbled upon Myers-Briggs even before that, but that's another story mm -hmm. we'll talk about in a bit. But I, mm -hmm. um, I stumbled upon coaching and I knew that I had found my tribe, but it still took me um, for many reasons, like many people um, and many women I know that we just kind of do what we need to do at various points in our life to, to get by, to raise a family, you know. So I um, I stumbled upon it. I had just gotten married, but um, my marriage didn't go very well. It I unfortunately got divorced. I became a single parent in your early 2000s. And I just had to kind of do what I needed to do, which was to go back to what I'd always done, which was office administration. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. And so it, it took me a while before my son, my son's now almost 20 and... Um, before I was able to, when he was a teen, that I could start f focusing on myself again. And mm -hmm. I did get certified in as a life coach when he was a toddler, but I still had to kind of put it on the back burner. And yeah. it wasn't until he was a teen and I felt like, and I had elderly parents and they had passed away. I finally really, I mean, not that I'm, God bless my parents. It's not that I wanted them gone, but there was a sense of now it was my turn and I could yeah. start focusing on my own life. And so that's when I kind of decided it was time to hang the shingle of the coach and get back to it. So. 
Well, I love that we're talking about this idea of focusing on yourself because in our content, something that we have to do is focus on our audience all the time. I call it a marketing mirror. Like we're always talking to our audience for our audience. What do they need to hear? But we can't, especially as personal brands, remove ourselves from the equation. So we have to really know a lot about ourselves so that we can weave it in, in our voice and our tone and our, like the way that we choose to show up and how we want to present ourselves. So I think it's really an interesting crossroads here that we're talking about. Like you took a really long time to get to this place for yourself. Um, and I think our conversation today will help a lot of people kind of unpack for them how to use Myers-Briggs to lean, I call it like leaning into your you-ness, right? Yes. I love, that's what I love about you, Jen. I, I absolutely, I mean, I connected with you immediately because I'm a big believer in, I've always been a big believer in being yourself, being who mm -hmm. you truly are. And yeah, coming into this online business, I mean, that was a whole different world for me a few years ago. It's been only yeah. really just two and a half and um, really having to, to find a way to definitely meet my clients where they're at and, <laughs> and and find a way to speak speak my truth and my voice authentically, meet them where they're at, but always to be myself. Because otherwise, I, I like I'm a coach that wants women to be them, their authentic selves. I can't, sure. I can't not be myself. So it it has been a fine right. balance. Yeah. When we're talking about the Myers Briggs, mm -hmm. I don't know if the listener here understands the four kind of pieces of the Myers Briggs. Can you give us a quick breakdown of like? how the Myers-Briggs works. And I know we're going to probably jump into have time, have time to jump into like two of those aspects, which is totally fine. Um, but what the hell is the Myers-Briggs? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's, and I want to keep this as simple as possible. Cause you know, I've, I've been reading about Myers-Briggs since the early nineties. So, mm -hmm. um, I feel like sometimes I, I speak about it and I think, doesn't everybody know this? And then I realized it, yeah, to, to understand no. it more. Yes, you're right. They don't. And, um, but it's really just about preferences. That's the way I like to see it. And like right hand versus left hand, we naturally come out, you know, strength, stronger on our right hand or stronger on our left. And so the Myers-Briggs assessment really assesses the four points. And um, I, I just described them in letters. The first okay. letter being either extroverted E or um, I, extroverted okay. or introverted. And I think a lot of people are talking more about extroversion, introversion now. So yes. most people have an understanding of that. Um, but that's basically where your, where your focus is going, um, either more outwardly or inwardly and where you're getting mm -hmm. your energy. So you, yes, when I first did Myers-Briggs, and I know we're going to go through all four, but I just really wanted to say this because it was such a huge aha for me. I did Myers-Briggs in the mid 2000s at a job that I was uh, at, a, at a community college. And I, at that point, still like somebody in my late thirties still thought extroverted meant friendly and mm. introverted meant shy. Yeah. And the person giving the assessment was like, no, 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 no. It's different because it's where do you get your energy from? The minute I understood that I was like, oh, I get my energy by talking and thinking out of my mouth and being around other people but I'm surrounded by these introverts who get their energy from just being alone and thinking in their head. It was like, oh, this is why my husband doesn't come home and unpack everything with me. Yes. Oh, it was yes. such a huge game changer for me. I agree, Jen. It's not just about understanding ourselves. It's about actually really understanding other people and accepting all of yes. us for who we are. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So understanding like, okay, E versus I is where you put your focus and where you get your energy, energy. from, extroverted yes. or introverted. Okay. Yes. I think that's really freeing. Yes. What's the next one? The next one is S versus N. So S standing oh. for sensory or sensing versus I, N, which is I for intuitive. Um, and uh, that's confusing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's an interesting one. It's a little harder for, I think, a lot of people to grasp, but it's really how you take in information. So okay. how I like to describe it that S's taken in from they're more um, tactile they want to they want to see feel okay. touch things to understand them and intuitives okay. just take in information like a download so it's sort of like they don't even know why like you'll hear an intuitive talk and um, they, they'll say something like I'm not sure why I know this but I just do oh, yeah. or I got a sense or my gut was telling mm. me where sensory people tend to want to they see that they want the facts. They want to literally see, touch, feel things, hear them. Yeah. Okay. 
So it's interesting. I think the reason I have so much trouble with the Myers-Briggs is the word sense to me means like, oh, I can sense it like intuition, but actually it's like sensory, like I have to feel it or experience it someplace. Yes. Yes. Tactile. Ta yes. Yes. And it is, it okay. can be a little bit more confusing. And to be honest, that was the one that I, when I originally tested way back when the very first time in 1994, maybe, um, that's the one I mistyped myself when I, when I answered the questions I've okay. sent. I, I'm an N, not an S, but um, okay. I probably grew up in an S family. So that was just language mm -hmm. I understood better. But, you know. Anyway. So we can think of N as intuitive. <laughs> intuitive, yeah. They, intuitive. they just took the uh, the second letter, um, intuitive. intuitive. Yeah, because I, for in the first letter, obviously E versus I, and there was already the introvert. So the I was already taken. Yeah. <laughs> so yes. they had to grab okay, the great. N. Yeah. All right. So we're going to talk about how we can talk a little bit more about that, but I just sure. want to make sure we, I give you time to get through all four. Yes. Okay. I, have so many okay. <laughs> I know. What's the next uh, version? Okay. What's so the next the, level. I the mean. next thing is how it's the T versus F thinkers okay. versus feelers. And mm -hmm. it's basically how we make decision decisions. Ah, okay. So we either make them more from a thought process, a logical process or more from a feelings value process. So it's just two different ways to make decisions. Again, none of these are right or wrong. This is just sure. your natural pre preference. Okay, so the S versus N, which is the, the previous one, is about how you take in information? Take in information, yes. And this one is what you do with that information? Yes, how you make your decisions. Decisions, yes. okay, yeah. great. Yeah. This is super helpful for me. Oh, good. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> and then what is the next last one? The right? last letter is the um the P versus J. And okay. easily and it's interesting, this one can a lot of people get a little um judgy on the J's. Um so J stands for judging and P okay. stands for perceiving. And this is basically how you organize your world. So how you oh. how you really organize it or um yeah, that's the best way I can describe it, how you organize your world. Judgers aren't judgy. So that's probably okay. the misconception. I think a lot of times mm -hmm. people think, oh, you're a judger. So you're super judgy. <laughs> I'm a J by the way. Um, uh -uh. Really what it means, the difference between a perceiver and a, and a judger is really about um, J's like to make decisions quickly. And I kind of call it like a natural instinct to get rid of information and funnel it down quickly to decisions. They want to too much Move information on. is overwhelming, almost. Okay. And okay. Um, they just, they're trying to make decisions. Uh, not that peas don't want to make decisions, but peas tend to like, it's like an opposite funnel. They want to keep the funnel open and they want to take in as much information as possible. Um, more ideas are better for them. It's like the complete it's opposite. It's almost like the peas want possibility. Uh, yes. And the J's want to wrap it up and move on to the next thing? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So yeah. this is Easiest so this is awesome. So so the so it goes so it's how you take in energy or how you manage energy, I guess. How you manage information, how you manage decisions, how you organize the information you are taking in. Yeah. That's a good way of describing it. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Guess which one I am. <laughs> Oh, it's good. You know, what's funny. My brain goes into like, it takes me a while sometimes to type people and I'm not always right. Trust me. Um, you've already said you're an extrovert um, an and extrovert. you're very systems oriented. Like you like organizing. So I'm, I'm guessing a J. Yes. Um, yes. I was like, what I just said about like systematizing, I'm like, that is the j -est yes. thing ever. <laughs> I know. Those are usually the ones I can guess usually fairly quickly. And then the, the, the two middle ones are a little bit harder. Although Lots of times I can tell a feeler pretty quickly because I'm an F, so I can go, oh, you are such an F, like, versus <laughs> my son who's a T, he's like, mom, logic, please, logic. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> what are your middle two letters, if you don't mind my asking? I actually don't remember. I oh. think I'm in, I think I'm an E. N T J. Okay. I'm which is actually a very similar to you, but you're an F J. I'm an F J. Yeah. Oh, which that's... makes we probably make a good pair. Yeah. I'd be the feeler and I'd be the thinker. <laughs> yes. And we probably put something really great it's together. So true. <laughs> the opposites attract. <laughs> I know. I know. There's a reason for that. Okay. So I feel like I understand the framework. And what I feel the Myers Briggs helped me do when I first started it was it helped me orient my own world around me. Like, oh, this is how I fit into the world, um, or this is how the world works for me. 
And then the second thing that it did was like kind of what we talked about before was like, oh, and this is how the world works for you. And it's different for you. And it's not better. Because of course, as an extrovert, I thought in my 20s and 30s, I thought like, it's the best to be an extrovert. That's the way you should be. I feel so sorry for all those introverts. And the introverts are like, you are so annoying. Yes. <laughs> Can you go away? Too um, much. And so I just feel like it gives us all a little bit of permission to just be who we are. So true, Jen. I'm so glad you said that because it's interesting. My ex-husband, he's just a, a classic kind of his type. He was very skeptical about Myers-Briggs when we were married. And of course, I was like always talking about it because what it had done for me was it allowed me to finally be me without judging mm. myself. Because I think I had such an internal, like a, a harsh internal critic. I always thought I should be someone else. So when I finally did Myers-Briggs, um, I was like, oh my God, I get to be me. But it really helped me understand other people and allow them to be themselves. So I remember with my ex-husband, I was saying, you got to do this, you got to do this, you know. And I, I, I kind of had typed him without him knowing it. And of course, his <laughs> type was the most skeptical, which made sense based on what he was <laughs> right saying but when he went and did it um through a course that had nothing to do with me he 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 turned out to be the right the same type that i thought and the same i watched him do the same thing that that just that freeing of like oh this is who i am in the world mm -hmm. i can be me and you can be you and you know we can all just be who we are without trying to change each other because we're just yeah. who we are naturally, right? Just be yourself. Yeah. Specifically around the E and the I, the extrovert and the introvert. <clears throat> like I said, with I happen to be surrounded by introverts all the time. And I realized, um, oh, it's because I often do the heavy lifting for them in a social situation or a conversation. And I had to do a lot of work specifically around several people in my family who are highly introverted. You know, introverts do all of their thinking in their head and they don't need to process. And I used to think like, what's wrong with me? Why don't they want to tell me these things? Do they not trust me? Um, and just last week, my husband came home from a day and I looked at him and this is like, you know, 20 years after learning all of this stuff. Right. And I looked at him and I'm like, why don't you go introvert for a little while? and get your energy back before you even like try to have a conversation with me. And he was so appreciative of it. And I would say in the beginning of our marriage that literally never would have happened. I would have been like, what happened? Tell me about yeah. your day. How was it? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> he would have just felt like I was like, he was like bombarding like, him. poking at him. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So um, it's been to be, to Oh, sorry. I was just, no, I was ahead, just going to say it's, it's honestly been being one of the best parenting tools I've ever had. I will tell you that oh, yeah, because my, yeah. my son is almost the exact opposite of me. We share the end, the intuitive. So we both take in mm -hmm. information intuitively, but we're the opposite on every other letter. And I can mm -hmm. tell you, there are times when I'm like, what is he doing in that room? Why does he need to be yeah. by himself all the time? Yeah. And then I will immediately go, that's just because he, the, he this is who he is in the world. <laughs> and I'll let him come out when he needs to and talk when he needs to. I give him the space he needs to. We'll joke. I mean, my kid's been talking Myers, but he'll be like, mom, I think that guy's an extrovert or I think that guy. And I'll laugh. I'll go, you're like, how old? And you already know this, but it's allowed him to just you know, my mom's an extrovert. She's, you know, a feeler versus I'm an yes. introvert. I like to do, use logic. And it really helps us just, yeah, as a parent, exactly. I think it's a really great tool too. <laughs> and and yeah. I'm not in a relationship, but, and in a relationship. Yeah. Well, even friendships, right? Friendships. Like I have all of my friends are high level introverts. Okay. And, me too. Um, <laughs> me too. Oh, yeah. Yes. I'm attracted to introverts. Yeah, I'm attracted to introverts, and I think they're yeah. attracted to extroverts, again, because, like, there's a level of, um, you know, they don't have to do that heavy lift, especially in a social situation, mm. um, but my niece is an introvert, and she's 17, mm. and she's, like, when they have to go out and do something, she's, like, mom, that was a lot of out of my bedroom time, <laughs> and then we all know, like, Kaylee needs to go, to back, go back into her bedroom and get some more energy. Yes. Yes. Uh, um, so what I would love to talk about, if, if listeners are now understanding the framework and how mm -hmm. it can even benefit them in relationships mm -hmm. and how it can benefit them in themselves, can we unpack how it can benefit them in their business and their content? Absolutely. Yes. 
What do you want to know? <laughs> I want to know everything. Okay. Well, you know, again, um, it on me. yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, if I think from my own experience, um, as an extrovert and someone who's a, an intuitive feeler, um, oh gosh, yeah, just all the letters I can absolutely think just from a personal perspective when I'm doing content, um, I... I'm a typical intuitive feeler in that I need to feel something before I can write it. It has to come in. It's usually downloaded. I Somebody could tell me to go sit in a corner and think about it or strategize. That sounds all logical to me. I'm like, can I go out into the woods and walk and stop thinking? Because that's when my the hits come for me. The information just comes into my kind of my heart, my gut, and I'll get ideas that way. So that's for me how I need to do content. <laughs> that's so good because I always talk about doing content strategically, which is important. Like we need to lead our people to a certain place, right? Like right. you don't want to be just like splattering it. Right. But what you're saying is for me to get the hit, I need to be doing X, Y, and Z. But for you, then the next question could be, and how can I put this into my plan so that it is strategic? Ah, okay. See, spoken like a true T. I love it. <laughs> you go to the logical. I love it. So TJ. You can, you can use it. Yeah. You can use your own way. Yes. And then, of course, benefit, benefit from, it from it. Well, I guess knowing yourself, that's the first thing. So I would recommend doing the Myers-Briggs if you can. First of all, getting know mm -hmm. your letters, read about it. Just I mean, you can do the, the, the true assessment, um, which you have to pay for, um, mm -hmm. or you can do an online version, a free version. But I think that really that's the first step understanding yourself and then mm. recognizing. So then it takes away that any kind of judgment on why mm -hmm. you may need to do things differently than someone else. Like if someone is telling you something and you're like, well, that doesn't work for me. Um, so I think that's a really big piece of self-awareness. And then mm -hmm. for me, um, I think because, um, yeah, I think I just had to kind of understand again, I'm new in the, the online world the last couple of years, really recognizing that uh, what I needed and pl I'm a, because I'm a J, I like to plan. P's don't often necessarily want to plan in the same kind of way. J's typically are planners. We want to organize. Okay. And so for me, my daytime or not my daytime or my, my, you know, my calendar on my phone and my computer mm -hmm. is my way of putting a little structure into my, my strategic planning. So it's like, Wednesdays become my day for creativity. I take everything off my calendar. I leave it mm -hmm. to go for a walk, to sit quietly, to do yoga. Well, I do yoga most mornings, but um, then I just allow creativity to happen that day. Like, and, and if it doesn't come okay, I can't force it, but I've learned to try and figure out how to put a little structure into my life to get the creativity. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, again, extrovert versus introverts. Um, I think, uh, I love introverts because introverts calm me and, and are beautiful people for me to reflect my voice back on. So mm -hmm. you were talking about needing to get it out of your head, recognizing that sometimes talking about things with somebody is mm -hmm. a good, like my sister's an introvert and she used to always say journal, journal, journal. And I'd be like, well, I journal a lot. I'm not ready. I don't want to journal now. I want to talk to somebody. So sometimes yeah. I need to talk about my ideas with another coach, yeah. with another mm -hmm. friend. But an introvert might say, yeah, I need to go journal about my ideas. Um, I need to record my ideas quietly. I need to have my quiet writing time. So just getting to know, you know, how you work um, to plan your own business and recognize that it truly is your, your you-ness, right? You running your business yeah. in a way that, so I, I can't give it like a, a across the board way to do it because everyone is different. It's just learning your own way and yeah. then building in the structure if structure is something you want because some people sure if you're an thrive. mp thrive in yes sjs especially world. thrive in structure yeah. nps will probably struggle a bit more because it's all about ideas and open-ended and information coming in but trying to keep it open so you know so, so where my brain goes if you're an np <clears throat> that intuition and a perceiving, right? Yeah. So for you, it's going to be harder to have to like close things out and to organize in a traditional linear way. Like you might be more circular or airy. Yeah. Um, and 
if you're working with people who don't understand that about you and they're like, no, here's the program, here's the, the spreadsheet, here's mm. the system you need to mm. use, that might feel really horrible yes. for you. Yes, yes. So again, this is how knowing yourself, you can be like, you know what? I love your system for you. I love that for you. Right? Yes. Like, yes. <laughs> shit's creeping. Like, I love that for you, but that's not good for me. But again, you can't um, be empowered to create your own system until you know this stuff about yourself. Absolutely. I'm, I'm all about, I feel like the biggest changes in life, it's all about self-awareness, just getting to know yourself. Because the more yeah. you know yourself and accept yourself for who you are and love yourself for who you are, it's way easier to do it for other people. Like it's way easier to be like, wow, that's so cool that that works for you, Jen. That doesn't work for me though. And no, no, no judgment, right? Or yes. Oh my God. Like with you and I, I think, because I can see why we're quite similar in letters. I'm like, I love your systems. They work for me. <laughs> right. Right. You know, so we've talked a lot about like knowing yourself. We've talked about how you can use this in terms of building your business systems and acknowledging your energy for you, what as a, and I would say like as a new ish content creator, mm -hmm. because you've been in the business online business world for two years. And I know that you recently created a quiz for your business. Yeah. Um, how have you seen the Myers Briggs kind of come into your actual copy and content? Wow. That's a great question. Oh, wow. I have to think about that. Um, I get, can I use the quiz as an example? I, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think when, when doing my quiz, um, well, first of all, I latched onto the system right away because I do need systems as a J. I love the organization. I loved the, the path down the, the steps and the, and the deadline. I'm very deadline driven. And as a J, I think that's quite common. Uh, we mm -hmm. love a deadline. I'm like, give me a deadline. I'm going to reach it. Um, and if yeah. I don't, that's okay. But I typically always will if it feels like the right mm -hmm. thing. So in creating the quiz, I think I, my, my, my type, the J was very systems oriented. I wanted a deadline. Um, I could see the time frame. I knew I could walk through it. As an extrovert, mm -hmm. I probably needed, I know I needed to talk to my friends, my coaching Verbal friends. Ver, yep, the processing, talking about my feelings. I need as an NF, as a feeler, I needed to make sure that I always took care of my heart, that mm -hmm. if I felt... Um, overwhelmed because often that's something that happens for me. I love information. The end loves to take stuff in, but I can easily get overwhelmed. I needed to feel that I had the space to step away um, and get support if I needed or just take some downtime. I also, as an F, values are very important to me. So things have to feel very, um, uh, they have to attach to my own top values. So mm -hmm. if things, I love ease and I love um, authenticity. So for me, when I work, those things come out in how I write. I have to be very heartfelt. I have to be very authentic. Uh, mm -hmm. As I said, my logic, I have to work a little bit more on the thinking play piece of me. Yeah. Not that it's not coming yeah. with age, but so that's for me personally, how I've probably been able to, um, to kind of use my own, just be myself and in my own way of creating. Um, yeah. Do you think that an introvert would have a tougher time creating content about his or her or their personal selves versus an extrovert? Is that an introvert extrovert thing or is that just a, I'm yeah. more of a private person? Might be. Yeah. I don't think it's necessarily an introvert versus extrovert. I mean, I, I have so many, like all of my closest girlfriends are introverts. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. And, um, two of them are coaches. One's a therapist. So I think they're all quite, um, self-aware and, mm -hmm. um, and I think that, I think that the world, there's a great book called Quiet. I don't know if you've ever yeah, heard of that. Yeah, Susan Cain. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I read it years ago as an extrovert. I read it wanting to understand introverts, but I'm also a highly sensitive person. So I really kind of got a lot from that book, but I also, you know, just understanding that I'm very sensitive in my heart, but it did help me understand introverts a lot more. And, um, and I don't necessarily think that they have more trouble. I just think that they need the space and the quiet and yeah. and the lack. Like, I think introverts have felt judged a lot. I really think this yeah. world has been more of an extroverted world. Like, you know, I'm an extrovert. I jumped into things when I was young. I was like, put me through. Even now, th even as I've gotten quieter and as I'm you know, aging, I hate that word, but just getting older. I like my quiet time. I like being by myself. Mm -hmm. I like recharging my own batteries. But 
you ask me out somewhere and throw me into a party, I'm on. I can be on. But my introverted friends will like want to die before they would do yeah. that. And they need a whole bunch of recharging. And time. they don't. Yeah. And I just want them not to feel that they have to judge themselves. So I think when it comes yeah. to creating yeah. for them, um, doing their own, like my, I've got a coach friend that's, you know, doing more posting and things. She just really has to do it in her own time, in her own yeah. way, quietly. No specific, and she's an INFP, which is very heart centered and very mm -hmm. um, sensitive. And I'm always just trying to say, you figure out your way in a quieter, you know, space, and don't feel you have to do it in a certain time frame or on a certain yeah. agenda. And she just has to find her way in an INFP way. So. Yeah. I love all the permission that is happening in this conversation mm -hmm. and not only just all the information, cause I love it. Okay. <laughs> how can people work with you? What, what are the options or how can they get into your orbit? Oh, well, that's really sweet. Um, well, you could do my quiz. So if you're, okay. uh, so, uh, my, yeah, quiz. my quiz is brand new. I'm very excited about it. Um, and as a J because I finished it. So that's always a good thing. I love finishing things. Um, so my quiz is called Women Over 50, What's Your Prime of Life Purpose? So it's about rediscovering your unique gifts and strengths so that you can sail into the next chapter of your life with confidence and ease. And, and how so can people get access to, to So that? Yes, sorry. So if you go to my website, I'm carriehanna.com slash quiz. Um, so it's K-E-R-R-Y. Well, I'll let you, you'll put the link in. Um, I will. Com. But it was yeah. actually going to say, so I'm from Long Island, <laughs> yes. which is, you know, we have a way of saying things. Yes. The way that you say K-E-R-R-Y, if you're yes. from Long Island or New York, is Kerry. Oh. But then I moved upstate to New York where they say Kerry. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, hey, but that's C-A-R-R-I-E. <laughs> and so I was going to say Kerry is K-E-R-R-Y if you're looking for Kerry Hannah. It's Kerry Hannah. Okay. That's funny. I'm Scottish and my fa oh. our family name is uh, way back when is Kerry with a C-A-R-R-I-E. But actually my oh. mother, because she's Scottish, said I did not want to call you K Kari. I wanted your name to be Kerry. So she spelled it K-E-R-R-Y. It's so oh. The pronunciation thing is quite cute. Yeah. So that's, that's how you can find me. CarrieHanna.com. The, the quiz is at slash quiz. Um, or you can, you know, my website, if you just look at the work with me page. Right you, yeah. You can see how you can work with me as a coach. Are you on the socials at all for people to follow you? I am. Gosh, sorry. Yeah. See, so new in the online world, still not used to marketing <laughs> myself in the way that I need to. Um, yeah, I am. So I'm at Carrie Hanna um, on Instagram and I have a Carrie Hanna coach on Facebook, but I, I, I'm typically on Instagram. That's where. Yeah. My, yeah. Carrie Hanna. And then how do you work with people? Do you have a group program or one-to-one? -one? I, I don't, right? I do one-to-one -one and I've got a, um, a small course that I put out last year. Um, it's called Back to You. So it's for women mm. over 50 or wanting to um, sort of reclaim their power, you know, after focusing on everyone else and uh, for many years. Now it's putting themselves first. So I've got a course and one-to-one -one coaching right now. So yeah, yeah, that's what I do. I did want to put a plug in for one-to-one -one coaching because I feel like in this world, and you might just be seeing the same thing of, um, you know, scaling, 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 and there's a lot of group programs and there's mm, a lot of courses. Mm -hmm. It's not always easy to find somebody who does one-to-one -one mm, work. Mm -hmm. And I feel like one-to-one -one work is incredibly powerful. Yeah. And so I just wanted to say, when you find a carry and you mm -hmm. need like the private one-to-one -one customized bespoke work. It's its quite a special thing these days. Oh, thanks, Jen. I, I love working yeah. with women and yeah, I just, I want to help people just be themselves really, you know, and I think my greater goal in life, that's it. Just, I just want people to be themselves. And I think that's why Myers-Briggs yeah. has been so incredibly enlightening for me. It allowed me to be myself and it helps me allow other people to be themselves. And I think a lot of us don't know what that is when you say just be yourself. You're like, well, I don't know what the hell that yeah. is because I've been trying to be something else for 40 something years. So yeah, I, get um, that. I think in this conversation, you've made it really clear that there are ways to be ourselves Absolutely. and it takes a little bit of work and a little and a lot of self understanding. And I just want to say thank you oh for this conversation. You broke this down. So this, cause I know the Myers-Briggs is enormous. It's a beast yeah. and you yeah. broke it down so beautifully. And oh. thank you for all of the information and the examples. Super My helpful. Super pleasure. I loved being here. Thank you so much for asking me, Jen. <laughs> My pleasure. 
Thank you for showing up to listen to the Content Creation Made Easy podcast. I know that there's a lot of podcasts out there, and I really appreciate that you showed up for this one. If you could rate and review this podcast, it would be so helpful because we're really trying to meet re we're really trying to reach more people this year who want to make content creation like less bonkers and less crazy for themselves. So I would really appreciate that. I'll see you next week with a great new content creation made easy podcast. Bye. Thank you.